Welcome back to Slothbox. This channel is proudly sponsored by Lion Paul Security Services and the Excelsior Sporting Club. Welcome back to Slothbox. I'm Lyndon Dixon and I'm joined by super featherweight prospect Alexis De Luna today. Alexis, how are you, my friend? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. Good. I want to go right back to the start. Obviously, first interview together. I want you to tell me how did you first initially get into boxing? Yeah, so... Uh... So when I first started boxing, um, so I could, uh, from what I remember is uh, my dad, he used to go to L.A. as a kid because um, he works out there in L.A. And uh, uh, he would always go over there and uh, uh, he sells like Western wear boots and um, like different merchandise. Uh, and I would go with him as a kid. And uh, I remember uh, when I was little uh, at the house that he would stop by. Uh, there was a Guy, a group of guys that would always get together and watch like the fights, like the weather. And uh, as a kid, like that intrigued me, like watching everybody just sitting there, like watching the fights on TV. And they would even do like the, they would play the the game, like where you would pick a, pick it, like a different rounds, whatever, and and you would pitch in for like, and uh, just being in that and then seeing it and how excited they would get. And uh, that was my first time seeing like any type of fight like on TV. Um, so I think that kind of like intrigued my interest for the sport. And, uh, and yeah, ever since then, uh, you know, my parents, I was real like super, I was super hyper as a kid. I was, I had tons of energy and my parents, they're already trying to find a sport to put me in. Um, and like, I tried soccer for a little bit and, uh, yeah, it was okay. My uncle, he's actually a, a soccer coach. So, um, mm. it was okay, but it really didn't catch my interest, like how boxing did. And, uh, I remember, I was begging my parents for for a while. I was telling them like, "Oh, I want to box. I want to box," but they didn't really take me too serious until I just kept bugging them and bugging them until um, they fought. We we started finally looking for some gyms here locally, and uh, we tried a few places. And you know, uh, so like we went to one gym, and he was an older guy, and he wasn't. He wasn't. It turned out that he wasn't there that day, and uh, and then another time we went and. And I was we were I was finding it difficult to find a gym, mm. um, so then um, you know as time went on, uh, one of my sisters she actually had a friend that boxed. Um, his name is Edwin Sandoval from here from Bakersfield, um, and uh, he told us about the Police Activities League, uh, the PAL Center, and uh, that's where that, that's where uh, I had started. That's where I started boxing at, and uh, yeah, so it started from there. Just the. Uh, then getting intrigued by just watching it on TV and then, uh, yeah. And I, I remember like the first time I walked into a gym, like a boxing gym, like you would see, like it was packed, like filled with kids and like everybody was doing like the rotation and, and yeah, it got me excited, man. I, that even got me more excited when I first walked in Mom, and I knew it was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Mm. But at what point did it go from, cause just looking at your record, you turned pro quite early. When did you know that, this is it. This was this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. At what point did that hit you? Uh, I think growing up, you know, uh, like you know, when people would ask you, like, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up, or you know, what do you, you know, for me, it was always, you know, oh, I want to be a, I want to be a professional boxer, you know, I wanna. So it, it was always in the back of my mind. Um, like I always had dreams of you know going to the Olympics and stuff. Like as a kid, you know, you you have those dreams and stuff. So, um. But yeah, I think um, it wasn't until I kind of got out of high school and uh, I was kind of, you know, questioning what, you know, what, what career path I was going to take and and I just really started to set in like, what, what do I want to do with my life? You know, like what's my purpose or, you know, and I started having those questions and, you know, boxing has always been there. You know, um, I was out of the sport for a little bit, um, but I knew boxing was where, you know, I was best at, you know, it's always, it's like a very disciplined sport. It always kept me on the right track. So, mm. so talk to me a little bit about the debut. The thing is, I've spoken to so many boxers now and they always have their own little story because the debut, you only get one, you never forget it. But um, tell me about yeah. yours. Uh, yeah. So I actually had my debut in, uh, in uh, Tijuana, Mexico. Um, I fought out there. Um, and uh, it was, uh, you know, out there, uh, Mexico, you actually, you know, like you don't get paid out there to fight. You actually have to pay to fight out there. So, um, and uh, and fighting out there, you know, it was mostly to get experience, you know, because um, I only had about 50 amateur fights. So, um, but yeah, we, we had heard about, uh, uh, there was actually some local fighters here that started off fighting over there. 
Um, so, and my coach was, he knew a, a couple of promoters down there. So, um, yeah, I had my pro debut down there and, uh, and it was good, man. Um, uh, like, I, like I said, you have to pay out there. So I remember like we had to, we had to do a food sale here. Uh, we did a food sale for that. And, uh, but it, it was exciting, man. I had my, uh, my, my family go out there and support me and it, it was good. It was a good feeling. Yeah. But fast forward to now, what a journey it's been. You're 10 and one, five knockouts. Talk to me about how the journey's been. Uh, it's been uh well my the the first year that I turned pro I, I was quite busy um I think I had like eight fights my first year and there were um I think I had about I want to say it was three or four fights in TJ and then the rest I had them here so about half and half uh mm. half fights of four and four I believe it was something like that um but yeah I was quite busy my first year uh. And, you know, after my first year, I kind of went the pandemic hit and pandemic kind of slowed things down a little bit. So I wasn't able to fight too much. But, um, you know, I've had a couple of fights here and there. Um, but it's it's been a journey, man. It continues to be a journey, you know, uh, just trusting the process and working hard and continuing to learn as I go. Um, but it's 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 been a, it's been a blessing. It's been it has its ups and downs, you know, it has its days where. You know, you're like, man, why am I in this sport? <laughs> and then it has these days where it's like, man, I, you know, you, you love it. You know, it's a hate love relationship with boxing, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in it. So, mm. you know. Well, um, before we talk about your upcoming fight, I, I want to talk a little bit about your last one. It was um the first loss of your career against Arturo Popoca. I was just wondering, yeah, different fighters deal with their first loss. Fingers crossed, it's your only loss, but different fighters deal with that in a different way. I just wondered how you dealt with it. It was last December, so it's been a little while since you fought, but yeah. how did you deal with that first loss in your career? Um, to be honest, um, I dealt with it pretty good. Um, of course, no, I didn't, I, nobody likes losing. You don't, you don't like taking a loss, but um, the way I looked at it was, you know, it was a lesson. I learned a lot from that fight, um, you know, from the camp. And yeah, I, I look at it as a lesson and, um, you know, going forward, you know, I know what I did wrong. And, you know, you know, I, I look at it as a lesson, man, but uh, mm. it, it was a good fight. But, like I said, that was in December. Here we are near at the, the end of August now. You've got a fight coming up soon. You make your return against an evenly matched opponent when I was looking at his record earlier against Rigoberto, um, got to pronounce this right, Hermosilio. Um, How are you feeling about that one? Because, like I say, the records, they on paper, it's an evenly matched contest. How are you feeling about that one? Yeah. Um, yeah. So right now in my career, you know, we're kind of taking those, those fights, you know, the fights where, you know, you, you want those 50, 50 fights, like even my last fight, you know, that was a really, I know I was going against a good opponent, 50, 50. Um, but yeah, I, I want these type of fights, man, the type of fights that are going to make me grow as a fighter and, you know, get better as well. And, you know, test myself in there, and you know, test my skills and, you know, just my heart. And, um, so I'm excited, man. I'm excited. And I know it's going to be a tough fight, but, I've been training hard, and uh, I'm in a right, a right uh, headspace, and uh, God willing, you know, uh, you know, I plan to come out victorious. How are you feeling about your opponent? Have you been able to see any clips of him? I'm not sure what the situation is with that, but how are you feeling about him? Yeah, I know, I know, he's a he's a tough, good fighter. I know he has a lot of experience. <clears throat> I've watched a bit of film on him. Um, no, he has an aggressive, come forward, uh, you know, style. Uh, he's a softball, you know, softball could be a little tricky, but uh, thankfully I've been getting a uh, softball sparring. Mm. And uh, so, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm preparing well yeah. for, for well, anything, you know, I mean, you can watch films sometimes, but, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're in there, you know, you got to, you know, you could expect one thing and then something else, you know, like, you know, so it's like, it's good to have a game plan, but also to, you know, be ready for different styles. Um, you know, I could say he's an aggressive fighter come forward from what it looks like but you know who knows you, you just never know right exactly well i just want to take it back a little bit yeah. to being a youngster again like you say you got into boxing mainly from your dad and the influence of his friends and the the hype of the saturday night fight i'm just wondering who were some of the idols you looked to looked up to in the sport as a kid yeah so growing up like i mentioned a few of them you know like mayweather i grew up watching mayweather um mm -hmm. I really, you know, he, he was probably the biggest one. Um, yeah, he, he was probably the number one. Uh, him, you know, Manny Pacquiao, 
uh, Miguel Cotto, uh, Sugar Shane Mosley. Um, yeah, those are kind of like the, the fighters that I grew up watching. Mm. Well, um, yeah. as we sit here now, you're 10-1, and one, five KOs. I just want to talk a little bit about your ambition in the sport. You're still only 22 years old in boxing. You're a baby, pretty much. But um, I just wondered, where do you see yourself when you're an old man, you've got your grandkids, hopefully you're looking at a few belts sat on the shelf. What do you hope to have told them that you've done come the end of your time in the sport? I think uh, just not having no regret, man. Uh, mm. You know, when I first decided to come back into the sport, oh, when I because I, like I said, I was off of boxing for a little bit. Um, but when I first just just having no regret, you know, to to go in and to to look back and you know say that you know I I went after you know my dreams or whatever you know whatever this this world says is your purpose or whatever just you know whatever you you put your mind to you know that that I went after it and I you know I gave it my best and just to have no regret, man. That's it. Yeah. The day that 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 would be it to look back and not have any regret. Speaking on that point of like not having any regrets, I saw a, a podcast that Jamal Charlo did recently, and he was talking about how too many fighters are trying to be the next Mayweather in terms of protecting that O, picking carefully who they fight next. They want to be the million pound man. Do you agree with the sense of nowadays you can't you can't think like that anymore? You just got to go in there and do it. I don't think I have. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that, man. I I, I tell everybody like. <clears throat> You know, Mayweather, he changed the game for a lot of fighters, you know, because, you know, he made he made an impact on the boxing culture. And I feel like, mm. you know, you you have fighters now that, you know, you, you do look up to, to, to Mayweather, you know, because he was at he was at the top, you know, he was at the top of the game. So you feel and, and, and as a young fighter, you always want to look at the best and, and you know, you, you look at the people that came before you. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I say I say it's tough uh, because. You know, you feel as if you have to be undefeated to be like him, or you know, you have to keep that oh, you know. Mm. Um, but I know, I think, I know, I think boxing is going in a different direction. I'm liking the direction it's going now. You know, you have fighters, you know, putting their all on the line, and you know, really taking these, yeah. these, uh, these, these, these uh, difficult fights and <clears throat> these tough fights, and I think that's what that's what boxing is about. Uh, really, is testing yourself and. Uh, you know, fighting the best and uh, and learning and growing and, and you know giving the the fans you know a, mm. a good a good show. Well, last question from me. It really has been a pleasure so far. But I was just wondering, we're seven months into the year, going to be going into the eighth. Where do you see yourself come the end of the year? Hopefully, New Year's. You with your family. What do you hope to have done? Yeah. Um. So I mean, <clears throat> uh, since like I. I have uh I have put like you know like when I when I first decided to go pro you know um like right now I'm not I don't have a manager I don't have a promoter or nothing like that um you know um but you know my goal has been you know five years you know hopefully you know to be signed by the promoter or manager that's that's been my goal that's been you know something that that I've I've given myself I'm like you know when I came in I'm like you know what I'm gonna give myself five years five years to see where you know it takes me and. You know, so I have that goal in mind. So, um, you know, God willing, you know, this fight goes well, and and you know, we'll see what goes from there. But, you know, I'm 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 really motivated this fight, and I'm just focused on, uh, you know, this fight. So we'll see what what happens after. Well, like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure. I can't wait to see you guys clash in the ring in a, in a week or two. But um, yeah. Anyway, I've been Lyndon Dixon. He's been Alexis Deluna, and we will see you on the next one. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.